For this cubic control volume, the following continuity equation is valid. It comes from the application of Reynolds transport theorem. The first term on the right side is the local change of mass, it represents the time rate of change in the mass, inside the control volume. The second term on the right is the convective change, since it represents, the net flow of the mass, through the control surfaces. It is the net convective rate, at which mass enters and exits the open control surfaces. The control surface are the six sides of the cube. Note that. This term happens inside control volume, whereas this term happens on control surface where, mass enters and leaves. So, the first term on the right side is related to volume, and if there is no local change of the fluid mass, inside this cube, then this term shall be zero. This is valid for incompressible fluid like water. It has constant density, so there is no local change in mass within its volume. It means the net mass flow into, and out of the open control surfaces, must be zero. In other words, what flows in must flow out. For well-defined inlet and outlet, this equation can be written like this. This equation applies to any control volume, regardless of its size. To generate a differential equation for conservation of mass, shrink this control volume to infinitesimal size, with dimension dx, dy and dz. In the limit, the entire control volume shrinks to a point in the flow. For easiness and calculation purpose, I will zoom this shrinked control volume. Just note that this differential control volume is zoomed. It is not finite now. It has differential size. The center of the box is shown at some arbitrary point P, from the origin. At the center of the box, we define the density as rho, and the velocity component as u, v and w, in x, y and z direction. At location away from the center of the box, we will use Taylor series expansion about the center of the box. That is from point P. For example, the center of the rightmost face of the box is located a distance dx over 2, from the middle of the box, in x direction. The value of momentum at that point is. As the box representing the control volume, shrinks to a point, however, second order and higher term become negligible. It can be neglected because dx is itself very small, so dx square will be very very small. Now, apply this truncated Taylor series expansion to density times the normal velocity component, at the center point of each of the six faces of the box. The mass flow rate into, or out of one of the faces, is equal to the density times the normal velocity component, at the center point of the face, times the surface area of the face. Therefore mass flow rate, through each face of our infinitesimal control volume is. As the control volume shrinks to a point, the volume integral on left hand side of finite control volume will becomes. Now, apply the approximation of these mass flow rates, to the right hand side of this equation. We add all the mass flow rates into and out of the control volume through the faces. The left, bottom and back faces, contribute to mass inflow. Similarly, the right top and front faces contribute to mass outflow. Substitute these mass inflow and outflow here. Many of the terms cancel each other out, after combining and simplifying the renaming terms, we are left with. The volume of the box, appears in each term and can be eliminated. After rearrangement, we end up with the following differential equation, for conservation of mass, in Cartesian coordinates. If we use the gradient operator, and express the velocity as, we can write the continuity equation for the differential element in vector form as, although, we have developed the continuity equation, in its most general form, often it has applications to, two-dimensional steady state flow, of an ideal fluid. For this special case, the fluid is incompressible and so rho is constant. Therefore for, two-dimensional, 